Good morning. Hopefully um, everybody can see me. Um, thanks for attending uh, today's session. Um, do feel free if, um, if there's any trouble at all, uh, do um, ping me a note. I'll have um, chat open. Um, and also if um, anyone wants to ask any questions at the end, feel free to uh, take yourselves off mute as well and happy to um, answer any questions you may have. So I'm uh, very excited again to be um, hosting another uh, webinar. Uh, today we're very much focused on augmented analytics and the future um, of data and analytics and I'll be putting uh, my point of view over and um, how Altis can, can certainly help in uh, this area. Um, one thing I definitely would like to, uh, to certainly start with in, in setting the scene is um, a personal, very personal point of view uh, that I have around data science potentially not being the um, red hot job to have um, in this decade. Uh, and I think, you know, we, we certainly saw a lot in the past about data scientists being the sexy new job that everybody must have. But I'm going to hopefully um, put um, an opinion and, and a position over today that data science um, may well find themselves automated and unemployed by 2025. Um, and this has pretty much come off the back of a, um, a survey and poll uh, conducted by data scientists themselves. So I would certainly add a level of caution around if you're thinking about a data science course, um, you may want to consider what the uh, data science course is actually going to contain and, and help you to do. So um, that's, um, uh, that's certainly what I I'm, I'm think we may well be seeing by 2025. So Let's get um, let's get started. Um, as I say, welcome again. It's great to have um, the new people attend, and also um, anyone else that's uh, joining for the first time uh, today, um, and also the the uh, return joiners as well. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Andy Painter. For those that don't know me, I'm the regional manager for Victoria um, and running today's session. What we'll cover today, and I'll sort of aim to speak for half an hour or so. Um, what we'll cover today is I'll give you a definition of um, what we understand by augmented analytics, why I believe it's important that we all um, action what we're talking about today and, and get involved with augmented analytics. And also I'm going to be presenting like I did last week, how you can actually look at starting um, in this space as well. So give you some options and ideas about where to get started. So a little bit about Altis just before we get going for, for those that don't know us um, or maybe a few facts that um, you're not aware about for, uh, for Altis. We are Australia and New Zealand's largest privately owned data and analytics consultancy. We've been established now for 22 years um, and offices across Australia and New Zealand um, and the UK as well. And we are, I will um, say that we are vendor independent. Um, I'm going to be uh, presenting a few um, vendors to consider in today's session, but um, very much when we look at vendors, um, we're looking at um, the, the best that we can see uh, in the marketplace to use. And um, that, um, the, the fact that we are, um, prominent in the marketplace and, and also uh, should be considered as a go-to partner is also backed up by um, Gartner naming Altus in, in their guide around who are the best go-to um, partners in the data analytics space. So let's make a start into what um, augmented analytics actually is. And what I'd like to do is to think about um, the analytics journey that uh, many of us undertake in our organizations and we help um, organizations to uh, to undertake as well. So um, a lot of the material that I'm looking at today has come from uh, Gartner. Um, I think people will also be familiar with um, potentially seeing uh, uh, these different types of analytics being described by, um, by IBM. But I thought it interestingly interesting just to uh, have a think again about the analytics journey that ideally as an organization we like to go on. So if we think about that in terms of 
um, the value that analytics offers to an organization and then the difficulty um, that can be found in actually uh, establishing or creating that level of analytic value. And if you remember how the journey goes, that many of us, um, certainly in the, in the early days and often are doing now, it's really around the descriptive analytics. So we can see what's happened and we sort of, um, that's a fairly easy thing to do nowadays with, with looking at um, historical reports and what's gone on in the business. So um, a reasonable value, but ne not necessarily the highest value we can achieve. Um, quite often we all move on to then trying to understand more why did it happen um, and certainly the use of um, OLAP cubes and um, the ability to do um, drilling into data to, to understand that helps very much. Um, but really the high value parts that we really should be trying to get to on our analytics journey are more around the um, predictive and also the pres prescriptive analytics pieces as well. And they're very much centered around the whole um, AI, ML, um, predictive space. And that's really where we're going to establish the highest value for an organization. So it sort of makes sense that um, if we can have tools and capabilities to actually help us in that predictive and prescriptive analytics space, that's that's what we should be doing. Um, and certainly, as we've all seen, um, including the, uh, uh, the advent of the data scientist role, um, that has happened over the last uh, 10 to, uh, to five years. That's, that's happening all the time. Um, what I would also like to add, and again, I suspect many of you have seen this, uh, this diagram, is that um, what we are also seeing is that when you're moving from more human-centered, um, so that's obviously us uh, as individuals carrying out a level of analytics and analysis, um, moving to a more machine-centered ability, and again, this is sort of the machine learning and AI space, the opportunity that it presents for us is very much around um, the time to actually carry out action is very much shortened. Um, and it's shortened because essentially you've got um, a machine um, that's doing the analysis and understanding what's actually going on in your data and potentially even coupling um, that to actually carrying out the decision on an organization's behalf. So um, we're very much you know, trying to head towards not just being able to do predictive and prescriptive analytics, but actually being able to do that um, in a machine centered world. So not having um, necessarily so much human in involvement and that will speed up the time that we're able to carry out, uh, carry out those actions. So I sort of wanted to sort of set that as a background scene really to think about why um, augmented analytics and sort of why that's happening now. So if we look at um, very much uh, what the definition is for it. And Gartner coined this term in, in um, 2017. So in our scale of sort of, I guess, the uh, the data world, this is still a fairly newish um, topic. So it's, uh, again, I'll, I'll emphasize that it's not too late to get on uh, and get involved in um, augmented analytics. So it's still fairly new, but Gartner um, coined the term and, and they eff effectively describe it pretty much. It says there that we're able to um, have enabling technologies such as machine learning and AI, probably an important aspect of augmented analytics. And it's very much to assist um, with the data preparation, insight generation, insight explanation. Um, and um, interestingly, you'll notice there that I've underlined, underlined the word augment. Um, so certainly in 2017, Gartner were very much seeing it as augmenting um, the capabilities. Now, whether that may well change over time, um, and become a lot more automated um, rather than augmented, we, you know, we'll, we'll see, but um, they're very much viewing it as that augmented um, analytics space. And again, you know, what, what are the benefits of why would we want to do um, augmented analytics? And I think hopefully as I'm, as I'm going through this, you can sort of begin to um, very much sense that there's a lot of um, ability there to um, be able to um, automate um, rather than using a lot of manual uh, intervention. But if we look at a, a particular example, and I think you know, we, we've, we've all seen this, where we, we know what the insight is. Um, it's not necessarily auto-discovered as such. In this example here, we've got um, revenues have increased by 20%, but um, you know, what, what does this actually mean? Um, could it be that um, it's better than average? Is this due to an industry trend? Uh, could it be uh, sustained and repeatable? So all of these sorts of questions 
about why the revenues increase we typically don't know and that's generally in the past where we've um, then brought on a team of data scientists um, potentially expensive infrastructure or not so much nowadays but certainly we've made a big investment to try and answer that um, and as we know data scientists are costly and they are scarce the good ones um, there's a lot of time spent sort of munging and massaging and cleaning the data and obviously it's still very much manual and, and prone to um, human error and human bias so um, I'm sure this looks and sounds familiar to um, many of us and the answer very much is is focused in augmented analytics you know that, that pretty much is um, the next generation as it says here of intelligence uh, delivery model um, running on a lot of the platforms that we are um, we are used to and our, what we're potentially looking for is that ability to have a, um, a plug and play format um, without the need for uh, supervision by a data scientist and again just to go back to my original slide right at the start there this is why I fundamentally think that the role of a data scientist is not going to be um, as significant or in the same shape and form that it is nowadays so that that's a definition but what I what I wanted to move on to now is to really think about why um, it's going to be important to actually take action today um, and why augmented analytics is something that you should be uh, very much exploring um, and starting to uh, to think about now throwing up some uh, more numbers and, and figures again but um, this is a piece of research that's been done to actually look at the projected side of the augmented analytics market um, and you can see that there's going to be a huge uh, level of predicted growth um, 2014 you're looking at numbers into the hundreds of millions um, this uh, piece of research is predicting that that's going to grow massively almost up to um, 30 billion um, for services and software in the augmented analytics space so um, you know there's, there's definitely something going on um, in our marketplace around augmented analytics and another thing as well I was trying to again I got, got this diagram from from Gartner, I really wanted to try and understand um, a little bit about what's what's um, going on and what did this actually mean. So, my interpretation of what this is telling us is that um, when we get to a point where um, more than 50% of the um, the marketplace are actually using um, AI and, and augmented analytics in our space, so in the data and analytics and BI space, we're sort of going to see a bit of a tipping point where augmented analytics will be um, the sort of key thing that everybody is um, is looking to use. So my take on this diagram was the fact that we are sort of in that middle part at the moment where we've got a reasonable level of um, adoption of AI in our space. Um, and that is advancing the time to um, uh, insight. We can get to um, insights much quicker. But I guess my caution um, and, and point around this one is that if we um, as organizations wait to see what's happening um, for others we're going to get left behind I think quite rapidly so rather than I guess waiting to be on that um, far end tail of, of adoption of technologies like this we probably should be doing something about it um, fairly soon and there is still very much a, a good opportunity to, um, to get involved and, and get going with that now. Um, I did want to talk about a number and a number of vendors in the marketplace that are currently um, very much actively involved in this. Um, coming from the UK, I'm a, a big fan of um, Top Gear, uh, and I don't know if uh, if people may have seen, but um, Top Gear, the uh, the car program in the UK, um, had this concept of a call cool wall. Um, so as they went through cars each uh, episode and season, they would um, argue as to where they would be placed on the call cool wall. Um, and the very best cars would go into the uh, sub-zero category. So I felt that there's, um, there's a number of good um, software vendors out there in our marketplace at the moment that would be worth um, exploring. Um, Microsoft Power BI um, is very much looking at how they can uh, bring augmented analytics into their product and, and there's some um, parts of the product that will um, allow uh, that to take place. Um, I very much like um, Yellowfin. Um, Yellowfin is a, is a locally based Melbourne um, data and analytics software vendor. Um, they're global. Um, they've got um, uh, very um, hundreds of uh, th you know, thousands of customers using their product worldwide. Um, but I very much like um, their product that they have called Yellowfin Signals that um, 
is very much in that augmented analytics space and definitely something worth checking out. And another, um, what I would see is sort of a cool, cool vendor at the moment for me would be ThoughtSpot. Um, again, a global software organization um, also ha has a, um, offices in Australia. So they would also be very much um, worth looking at. They have a part of their product set called Spot IQ that, that helps um, in the augmented analytics space. Um, it's also very much fair to say that um, a number of the um, traditional BI vendors are also all exploring this augmented analytics space. So if you have a tool in place at the moment, you may find that there are already uh, aspects of augmented analytics available to use. If you don't, then very much would welcome um, you looking uh, maybe to us to, to help you um, pick a tool or, or to uh, demo a tool. What I wanted to do as well is, is just present a couple of um, case studies uh, so that you can, again, see some of the benefits of why augmented analytics um, works. Um, I'm going to use a, a case study here from Yellowfin. Um, so they've been working with a, um, a company called Aero uh, Edge uh, that is a, a manufacturing company there. You can see it does uh, um, one of the only two manufacturers in the world that uh, produces sort of low pressure uh, turbine blades, but they've been using um, yellowfin signals and some of the benefits there, I think, sort of highlight why augmented analytics is important, but we've got um, a massively reduced time to actually identify issues. Um, so it's serving up um, the issues um, that are going on. Uh, there's a lot of time reduced in actually producing manual reports um, and signals is also beginning to um, be able to, to be used to sort of predict uh, the issues um, that are going on in the production process as well. So some good um, good benefits with um, with augmented analytics on, on that one. Um, the second one I wanted to talk about is, uh, is a project that, that we've worked on for a client. Um, and what I really wanted to do was just highlight the fact that as the augmented analytics space uh, becomes more advanced, the ability to actually connect that to automated decision making um, or, or what we call automated decisioning is very much a reality. And in this case, this, this case study was around um, the client was taking lots and lots of pictures across their uh, sewage network of access chambers. Um, and then there was an AI algorithm that had been created to actually see if it could it could work out which ones may be about to get um, blocked and, and needed cleaning. And the decisioning part was very much um, what was then going to happen was the uh, image would then be um, sent to a, um, a human to actually look at and further interpret. But because the, um, as you can imagine, across a, a sewage network, there are literally hundreds of thousands of access chambers. Uh, there's no way a human can, can look through all of those um, images as they're being sent very regularly. Uh, so this was a sort of a, a use of um, augmented analytics in the AI, AI space to um, help them with that. Okay, so I'm, I'm rapidly moving through all of this. Um, again, just, just emphasize, very happy to have a, have a longer discussion uh, with people if they would like to explore this space. But what I thought I would do for the um, final part is very much look at how we could actually um, start to use that augmented analytics and, and where maybe a, a good place for um, everyone to, uh, to start. So if we think about um, what's currently going on when we are doing um, data analytics and, and particularly a data analytics workflow, we're very much manually um, preparing data. Um, so um, looking at the data quality, enriching it, cleaning it, uh, doing all of the normal um, things that we, we generally look to do before we actually go ahead and use the data. Once we prepare data, we often then move into uh, building models and then trying to identify patterns in the data as well. And again, very much a, a manual exploration, first of all, of using the data and then manually um, building models, um, unless you're lucky to be using some of the more automated model, model building software out there. Uh, but typically uh, a lot of data scientists involved in building those models. And then again, we are, once we've done built our models and, and uncovered some of the patterns and facts going on in the data, we're then presenting again, manually presenting those uh, dashboards, storytelling, uh, collaborating, collaborating um, with our colleagues on that. But I think the, the, 
the key thing that uh, I'll sort of wanted to bring out with this is all of this is very, very much manual. And if we think about trying to um, have a have a speed to insight, it's not really going to help. And as I'm, as I'm sort of hopefully showing you, there are better ways using augmented analytics to actually get to um, insight much quicker. So what might the, uh, the new way of working and, and world look like? So very much it's augmented um, and by augmented, we mean we have a machine uh, that can actually help us with that. And some of these tools will actually do the uh, data preparation for you. So you can, you can actually augment um, the data preparation piece. Uh, so things like they're detecting uh, schemas, automatically um, cataloging data, identifying uh, data lineage and, and uh, constructing that for you. So there's already a level in the marketplace with a number of these tools that they will actually help you um, prepare your data. So we're saving time there already before um, we're even looking at some of the um, analytics piece. Now, as we move on then, obviously the, the um, well, I'm hoping it's obvious that the key thing that a lot of these tools are doing is to actually automating and automatically finding patterns in the data for you. They will be building their own models in the background. Um, you don't need data scientists involved. The models are being built in the background. The algorithms are being run and they're finding what are likely to be the most relevant piece of data for you to, um, to investigate. So that's all being done as well in the background for you. So um, again, saving a huge amount of time it's running a lot quicker, um, faster ability to actually see those, those insights. And then further to that, what some of the tools are also able to do is to actually construct a narrative for you. So they can um, automatically generate the story. So rather than an analyst having to wade through the patterns and, and data and results that are coming out, these tools will actually generate the, um, the, the narrative for you and, and the story, which is, um, it's certainly quite clever and I, I can imagine and, and think that it's probably quite spooky to start with while you're, when you're seeing some of these insights coming up that, that the um, software and machine is actually able to um, almost in effect tell you uh, what's going on in your business. So we can see that really the, the use of augmented analytics should be a huge amount of um, time saving, uh, should be taking out um, a fair chunk of cost in, in your business as well from a um, needing to use um, uh, you know humans and, and people for that and just getting at getting at the whole sort of insight uh, a lot lot quicker so there's definitely i think a strong case for using augmented analytics and further to that what i wanted to do is sort of you know in my in my opinion where would be a good place to actually start and what i'm going to walk through is, is probably also an area that um, it doesn't just uh, cover or a process to cover just augmented analytics but any new tools or technologies that you're thinking of doing. And typically what we would do would be looking at running a proof of concept. And I know in some organizations, proof of concept is not a great term. So maybe you term it a proof of value um, or some other thing, but effectively what we're looking at doing is taking um, this technology, augmented analytics and actually running it as a, as a proof of concept. So what might be the steps that we work through that? I think very importantly is to try and identify a specific business case um, such that you can then set expectations around that technology. I don't think it would be a sensible thing just to um, decide that you're going to run a, a proof of concept in augmented analytics and, and, and speculatively pick a data set to run it on and then hope that it's going to show something. You probably need to be um, having a specific business case in mind that you may want to look at. If we think back to that example that Yellowfin had around the production side of things, they were looking specifically for um, production issues that they could surface through the use of augmented analytics. So definitely we want to ideally have a, have a business case uh, in mind. We then want to make sure that uh, we know where we're currently at um, in the performance of what we're trying to assess. So we must make sure that we take um, some sort of baseline. Again, it, it's very difficult to prove a new technology is going to work effectively if you don't under, understand what your original baseline uh, was. So that's very important. And we want to know ideally, again, what we are expecting the performance to be improved by. Uh, again, if you don't know what that's going to be, it's very difficult to quantify whether um, an improvement of 1% is good 
whether it's really bad. It's very difficult, very, very difficult to know unless you've set that up at the start. So we want to make sure that we are actually um, thinking about if if the performance is X, then this is a good thing. Uh, and obviously that, that will help further on as well. Obviously, you then go ahead and run your POC. Um, and that can you know, literally take from, I would say, um, a number of days to a number of weeks. Um, the likelihood is you're going to need to give um, the augmented analytics tools a number of cycles to run over. Um, they may well start to identify initial patterns in the data, but you're likely to want to let them run um, probably over a number of um, a number of weeks, possibly months, to be able to start to um, see some of the trends coming through as well. But um, very much that they will be able to identify um, insight straight away with data sets. It's just if you want some additional insights uh, to be generated, you may need to give them a, give them a bit of time. Obviously, tracking your metrics, once you've run your POC, you want to then go back and revisit the metrics that you'd originally set out um, around the performance and what you were hoping to see. Um, and once you've got that, once you've got that, you know, you've understood your your metrics and how they've performed against what your original expectations were, what the original performance baseline was and, and what you found, that gives you a much stronger case to actually then present the results back to the project stakeholders. I think it's it's difficult in today's market to um, run one of these, um, I guess, uh, proof of concepts using a piece of technology and uh, hope potentially just to wow stakeholders with um, a random sort of finding. You, know, you may get lucky, but I'd probably um, suggest that it's worthwhile setting this out as a, as a well thought through and run project. And you can also then work out what your investment levels may be. Um, if you understand how this technology will help and you've got a, a very clear um, metric uh, to see that, you can then also gauge what the cost of actually acquiring that technology permanently is going to be and also what the cost is going to be in putting that technology um, into place in your organization. Because again, there's still very much a case for understanding that your return on investment that you're going to make after the proof of concept is um, going to be uh, going to be of value. And then once you've got uh, obviously agreement from um, whoever you need to, your board or your CEO or um, other people in your organization, you can then schedule that um, to transition the proof of concept into more of, a, of an, a, an active project. And that doesn't often mean nowadays we're not throwing the proof of concept away. It may be a case that we are moving it into a production state. So we shouldn't be necessarily thinking that proof of concepts are, um, are sort of a, a waste. So hopefully um, you can see there that, that we should sort of go through a good uh, and robust way of actually proving that um, a technology like this can work. And I, I think it can be done in a relatively short time period. Again, I don't think we're necessarily thinking about months and months to run this, but probably more of a, a sort of over a number of weeks uh, situation to run a good, well thought through uh, proof of concept for augmented analytics. So I thought I would just um, just run a summary before I sort of open up to um, uh, to questions, just to summarise what we've what we've covered today. So just a, a recap on what augmented analytics is. It's very much around the um, augmented ability of a machine to help you um, prepare data, generate insights, and also explore the insights that have been generated as well. Um, which is, uh, in my mind, it's a very exciting and fascinating, fascinating place. I first very much saw it around um, this ability to generate insight was going to be quite incredible. I wouldn't need to employ loads and loads of analysts to sit there pouring over dashboards and reports. I can get a machine to service up um, insights for me, uh, which is pretty, pretty exciting, um, exciting place to be. Now, hopefully I've, I'm showing you that there is still a good point to get behind this when it's not too late um, to get involved with this. But I think if people delay exploring or, or looking at implementing augmented analytics, you are going to get left behind. You'll get left behind quite rapidly. So there's definitely a, a point here where it's a good good point to, to get involved in and get going with it. And I definitely recommend um, a proof of concept or whatever you like to call them would be a good place to start as well. And, and 
Altus has very much got a, a way and methodology of helping conduct a robust uh, proof of concept. So as a, as a consultancy, we can very much help you. Um, a couple of call to actions I would say here, very much happy if anyone here would like to actually get their hands on or see uh, a demo of a solution. Um, and we can do that across our um, vendor contacts as well. Maybe you're interested in Yellowfin, maybe you'd like to see Power BI, but and th or thoughts, but we can do a certainly a range of demo for you um, and attend that demo um, as you like. Um, and another thing I'd like to, like last week as well, I'd very much like to offer um, a discount if anyone would like to undertake uh, an augmented analytics proof of concept. Um, what I'd be quite happy to do is to look at um, offering you a, a discount of 10% of off our uh, standard prices to, to running that. And as I say, I, I think we could scale a proof of concept to run over a number of weeks. So again, you may not be looking at too much of an investment to, um, to get, get, get going in this augmented analytics space. So I'll probably end um, my part there uh, and then basically throw it open to any questions. We'll obviously make this uh, content available after the seminar so you can back, go back over it. And um, I'm definitely definitely here if you would like to have any further conversations as are um, your own um, regional contacts. Um, if you'd like to talk to the regional managers and arrange sessions with them, um, that's very much um, open as well. But I thought what I'd do is just, just sort of open it up. If Anyone wants to ask a question, feel free to take yourself off mute or I've got the chat window open at the moment. So um, yeah, please, please go ahead and ask anything you'd like. All right, it's sort of, Sort of sounds like maybe there aren't, aren't too many questions um, today. Uh, hopefully I've, um, maybe I've, well, I'm hoping I've sort of wowed you with, wow, this is definitely something we should be looking at and exploring. Augmented analytics is the future of data and analytics. So um, definitely something to get started with. Um, okay, if, um, if there aren't any questions, I'd very much like to thank you. Um, been Hi, sorry, great having actually, you again. I, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm a recent law graduate. I'm quite interested in data analytics, particularly language analytics with respect to uh, assisting law firms in, in litigation strategy. I'm wondering if, if you know of any resources that I could look into, because um, I don't have a background in data analytics, but any resources that you could point me towards where I could learn more about data analytics and particularly augmented analytics. Yeah, I think um, definitely... Um, well, and again, this is this is my opinion. It's definitely definitely worth um, talking to um, to others, um, and definitely having a, a look around uh, LinkedIn as well um, to, to see if you can get some guidance around that. Um, for for me personally, my journey started from uh, looking at what Gartner was doing um, uh, because, as I say, they've sort of coined that term around the augmented analytics space. So Gartner uh, is very much active uh, in that area. I would then start to look at um, what different vendors are doing. Um, and there are some interesting vendors out there that are looking very much in that um, natural language processing space. Um, ThoughtSpot is a good one. They're certainly um, involved actively in that in that space, as others will be. So I would then have a look at um, what some of the some of the vendors are doing. But um, I would definitely also, you know, have a have a sort of canvas around and looking at um, what you may also better see and, and ask um, from others. It, it may be more in your space. Um, that, that's going on in LinkedIn. Great, thanks very much, Andy. Thank you. Okay, well, I might um, might draw it to a close there. Just to highlight that we do have um, weekly webinars going on. Um, so if you registered for this one, it's the same location on our website. Um, and I'm hoping that a number of you will have seen as well um, that we're also running a uh, webinar on um, fascinating area of bees um, and the whole data for good side of things. So um, you may have seen that on LinkedIn. If you haven't, please let me know and I can certainly um, set you up with registering for that as well. Um, all right, I've just got another question as well. Someone has asked. Um, 
So Adam has asked, will the augmented analytics pick up only historical patterns or will it be able to show patterns that are coming up with uh, much more meaning? Uh, yeah, good, good question. Um, it can certainly work with, um, with historically what um, has occurred. And um, what it's going to be doing though is um, also presenting and, and suggesting um, what action may need to be, be taken off the back of those historical patterns. Um, and some of, the, some of the tools will actually also, also suggest then um, potentially, potentially predicting what may well occur and therefore what actions people should be doing. So yes, it is obviously working a lot off historical data, but it won't be just, um, I guess, reaching back and, and looking at just what's gone on in history. It's also going to be um, projecting and predicting what could be uh, about to happen. Okay, um, all right, well, I, I'll probably bring this to a close um, and just again, uh, thank everybody for um, their attendance and, and hopefully if you've found, uh, found this one useful, but uh, definitely tune in for next week's uh, webinar. Thanks very much, everybody.